Kieran, it's back to you for more of PM Agenda. Helen, thank you very much. The Australian Medical Association has today released a national update on women's health. I spoke to Steve Hamilton, the head of the AMA, a bit earlier in the day, and there are some disturbing statistics in this, particularly relating to domestic violence. Well, it certainly is, and the AMA has relaunched its uh, state, uh, statement on women, uh, the health of women, and we're very happy to have Senator Nash and Senator Perris with us today, and they did highlight as we did, the tragic statistic, which we really aren't doing much about, uh, which is uh, violence and sexual violence against women. And Australian women will, will, will um, report, 50% of our Australian women will report uh, either physical violence or sexual violence against them in their lifetime. And that number obviously increases dramatically when you look at certain cohorts, particularly our Indigenous community. Well, sadly, that's absolutely true, and Senator Perris made that point very strongly. It's a 35 times the rate of domestic violence, and often alcohol-related domestic violence against Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander women. That statistic is just shocking. And it's resulted in presentations to emergency departments and admissions. Look, we know there are 23,000 admissions a year to our hospital sector with alcohol-related domestic violence, and I guess they're the ones we know about. So is in your update position statement on women's health, is violence the greatest threat to, to Australian women's health well, as we stand today? Well, it's one of those ones we should be able to do something about. Look, the, um, the major cause of, um, of death in women is, is still cardiovascular disease, and we've got to think about smoking rates, we've got to think about the antecedents of that, obesity rates. But the one thing, and we can turn that around, but the one thing we should turn around much quicker uh, are these domestic violence rates. We should be able to switch that off by you know, in assisting women in that area, uh, changing the, the attitudes of society to that, uh, to actually make sure we can get a turnaround. And, and, and what, as the AMA, do you want to happen there from, from legislators? Is there anything that politicians can do, or is this something that needs to happen from the ground up? Look, we've been talking about this, sadly, for 25 years, about domestic violence in women. The rates really haven't gone down. Now, in 2010, there is a policy that was put out that we do need to implement to look at uh, issues, that, the things we can do to actually improve domestic violence. Senator, Senator uh, Perrin uh, was talking about uh, alcohol and the scourge of alcohol abuse. And we really need to hear that message and look at what we can do about uh, alcohol-related violence, not just on our streets, but in, in people's homes. And uh, you know, that's why we're, we're, we're talking to the Prime Minister about this, uh, a national summit, to bring together experts to get some practical solutions uh, so that we can uh, roll them out in an even fashion right across the country. So we, we need that leadership. And beyond our Indigenous uh, community, what about other parts of society? Are you seeing any real trouble spots that need to be dealt with? Well, we are, and uh, there's a variation in the delivery of health care through our society. And really, if we could, we could minimise that variation, we'd have a significant improvement in our statistics. So the things that cause problems for women are socio-demographic status, so if you're less well-educated, if you um, live in a particular area, the, your access to health services is less. Uh, if you're um, culturally and um, linguistically different backgrounds, you have difficulty with access to services. We've mentioned Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Uh, if you have a disability, uh, you certainly have different needs and different, different requirements, and that's a challenge for us. Um, different age groups of women obviously vary. I mean, we have women overrepresented as carers for our community. They do the heavy lifting when it comes to caring and often to the detriment of themselves. Um, they live longer and of course their burden of chronic disease is actually longer. So there are special needs for women that we need to focus on. It does vary throughout their, throughout their lives and it does vary for different populations of women and we need to understand that any policy needs to be fairly broad and able to pick up all those different areas. And, and finally on the issue of, of mental health, it's obviously a big one. Uh, one of the many shocking statistics in your update is that for women under 34, suicide is the leading cause of death. Well it certainly is and that's a tragic loss of life that we see and, and we don't know but much of that may be due to uh, domestic alcohol related violence because we know that the afterwards there's depression, there's anxiety, there's there are difficulties with accessing services and that uh, suicide rate for, for our young and the healthy population of women absolutely needs to be turned around. Dr Hamilton, as always, appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you very much. Time for a break and then I'll be joined by Patricia Carvelis and Jacqueline Maley.